Thanks very much indeed, Chair, and uh, thanks to everyone for coming. I, I don't want to talk very much because you sat very patiently for uh, over an hour. So I'm just going to ask for four questions as the discussant here. Uh, I'm sure you don't need me to uh, 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 be provocative. With a, there's, I think the report's excellent. I think it's a really good report. And uh, Georgia invited me to be a sort of provocative person that uh, implements large-scale economic development projects, uh, very often for DFID. And uh, I don't want to disappoint you, but uh, I, I just know from practical experience I've seen a number of development projects go catastrophically wrong because they haven't taken into account uh, gender issues. There's been no gender analysis and, uh, and have really failed, even on that most precautionary principle of just do no harm. I've seen lots of money going into projects that have caused a great deal of harm. And uh, so, so I get that side of it. I get the, the importance of, uh, of um, uh, women's and girls' economic empowerment. So the four, four issues I just wanted to raise were um, how, how gender is dealt with in, in mainstream economic development projects, uh, the definition that was used in the uh, report, uh, your findings on evaluation, and, and just some of the, I, I thought, quite jaw-dropping findings, actually, from the report itself. So, very briefly, uh, how's gender dealt with in economic development? Uh, I think traditionally it's been overlooked, would be a very polite way of saying it. Um, uh, the organisation I work for now, Coffee International, had a big uh, uh, market development conference two years ago, and uh, one of the main conclusions from that was that market development has been gender blind. Again, I think it's a rather kind way of saying that uh, it's been, been a very low priority. thing is that it's changed, and in terms of both the policy priority, um, but also the, the development priority, it's, it's extremely important now. What, what I found interesting, though, was reading the report, which is, I think, gives a very nuanced view as to uh, gender issues being the relationship between uh, economic and, and relationship between men and women. And then looking at a typical log frame for a typical big DFID market development program where it's 60% of jobs go to women, 40% of the income will go to women. And trying to reconcile those two, I'd be really interested in the debate where if, if you accept the definition in the report about what empowerment is, it isn't reflected in the way that a lot of the mainstream economic development <laughs> projects are, are currently uh, uh, currently planned and, and uh, designed. Um, so I think we are in a bit of a pickle at the moment in the in the economic development space with with regards to gender. I don't think that we need be. You know, if you look at the the majority view perhaps within economic development looking at market systems and looking at all the rules and regulations that surround a transaction and make it either fair fair or not fair actually it's very well set up and we have the tools to incorporate gender uh, gender analysis into that um, what I think is important though um, is to make sure that you understand the context the market system that you're working in before you focus on the uh, uh, the women or the girls involved. In the report, um, these interventions were evaluated against all of these different criteria. And so implicit in that is the, uh, the view that each intervention should achieve all these things. You know, for instance, microfinance isn't any good by itself. It's got to have life skills and all these other things bolted onto it. So it's a respectable viewpoint, but I think it's quite contentious if your aim would be to try and take this um, women's economic and girls' economic empowerment and make it applicable and use a common language that could be read across into broader economic development projects. Because I think the consequence of trying to do all of these things in every project is that you will end up with small gender projects and then big stuff happening that doesn't talk to them, which I think would be a, a tragic loss, actually. Mm. Um, 
On the evaluation side, my penultimate point, I thought you were very, very charitable. I, I thought it was, uh, I mean, I, I found it amazing that you looked at 20, well, 254 evaluations. I think that's extraordinary in itself. But when you came down and you rated 70 of them as good, um, but then found that only half of those ones that you'd rated as good had a theory of change or looked beyond outputs or the really, really basic stuff. Um, which, which we all know is, is uh, evaluation good practice. It suggests to me that rather than 28% being good, um, actually it's probably a figure of, by most normal good evaluation criteria, perhaps half of that. Uh, because I think that there, there probably aren't that many evaluation specialists, there are plenty in the room, but uh, that would say that you could have a credible evaluation without evaluation questions without a theory of change. I mean, these are pretty basic building blocks. Uh, so I think quite, quite shocking, actually, and uh, a really important if we're going to increase the accountability of aid to the people that are paying the money, that we, we do that better. Uh, and then just very finally, um, on the findings, I, I found I f nearly fell off my chair a couple of times. I thought there were some extraordinary... <coughs> Uh, statements um, in here and um, I th just to provoke discussion I'll just read a couple of them uh, economic initiatives are insufficient to economically empower women in, in themselves microfinance has no impact on social outcomes uh, training works Ooh, nearly <laughs> fell off my chair there um, social protection is unlikely to have significant impacts at community level unless it's accompanied by measures to counter <coughs> gendered social norms. Now, I don't have to be provocative. There's some really provocative stuff in here. Um, and what I've urged you to do, just on closing, is I, I would read the report. I, I read it. I thought it's great. Bits of it I didn't agree with. But I think uh, it'll make you a better person. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.